Did you know that Ukraine is fighting back with 3D printed weapons? Makeshift workshops and underground labs are churning out drones, weapons, and battlefield tools at an unprecedented rate, all with the push of a button. It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? But this is modern warfare. From custom-built drones that drop bombs with pinpoint accuracy to custom rifle parts that help keep soldiers in the fight, 3D printing is rewriting the rules of warfare. Ukraine, facing an overwhelming military force, has turned to this cutting-edge technology to level the playing field. But is this truly a revolutionary breakthrough, or is it just a desperate workaround? And what is a 3D printed weapon? Let's find out. When Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, Ukraine faced an overwhelming challenge. Russia had more troops, more tanks, and a larger arsenal. But wars aren't just one with numbers, they're one with strategy, speed, and innovation. As the war intensified, supply chains crumbled, and getting access to military-grade equipment became a logistical nightmare. Traditional arms manufacturing couldn't keep up with the demand, and relying on foreign weapons shipments was both expensive and unpredictable. So how do you keep an army supplied when resources are stretched thin? You find a way to produce what you need fast. That's where 3D printing came in. But what exactly is 3D printing? Think of it like this. In traditional manufacturing, if you need to make a metal part, you start with a big block of material and cut it down to shape using machines. That takes time, expensive tools, and lots of wasted material. 3D printing works in the opposite way. Instead of cutting a shape out of a block, it builds objects layer by layer from a digital design. Imagine squeezing toothpaste out of a tube, but instead of toothpaste, it's melted plastic metal, or carbon fiber that hardens into a solid shape. This method is called additive manufacturing because material is added rather than removed. Before the war, 3D printing in Ukraine was a niche technology, mostly used for prototyping, small-scale manufacturing, and academic research. But in the chaos of war, local engineers, makers, and volunteers quickly realized its potential. Unlike traditional arms manufacturing, which demands massive factories, extensive supply lines, and months of lead time, 3D printing offered a way to produce essential parts instantly, with minimal resources, right on the front lines. And Ukraine didn't waste any time putting it to use. In just the first 16 days of the invasion, a single volunteer group printed more than 3,000 individual parts for military applications. Weapon mounts, drone components, medical tourniquet clips, things that would have taken weeks or months to source were now being produced in hours. Across the country, small workshops, university labs, and even home-based hobbyists became miniature factories churning out everything from rifle accessories to periscope devices for trench warfare. Materials were initially a challenge, with filament supplies running low. But with international support, Ukraine secured high-strength polymers, carbon fiber composites, and metal filaments, allowing for more durable parts. But what exactly is being printed? Let's start with one of Ukraine's biggest innovations, 3D printed drones. Ukraine's use of drones has been one of the most groundbreaking aspects of its war strategy, but traditional drone production comes with its own set of problems. Manufacturing is slow, costs are high, and supply chains can be disrupted. So how do you build drones faster, cheaper, and in larger numbers? The answer lies in 3D printing. One of the most impressive examples is the Titan Falcon, a long-range, 3D-printed drone that can fly up to 400 kilometers. Far more than a surveillance tool, it's designed for both reconnaissance and strike missions. With the ability to stay airborne for six hours, it gives Ukrainian forces a critical edge. But here's what makes it truly game-changing. Because it's almost entirely 3D printed, it can be manufactured at a fraction of the cost of conventional military drones. That means more drones in the sky without breaking the budget. And if one gets damaged, no problem. Its modular design allows engineers to repair and upgrade units in hours instead of weeks. But the biggest advantage? Adaptability. 3D printing lets engineers modify designs on the fly. 
If a drone becomes vulnerable to Russian electronic jamming, they don't need months to develop a new model. They can tweak the design, print new components, and roll out an upgraded version in days. This rapid iteration process keeps Ukrainian drone forces one step ahead, making them highly unpredictable and nearly impossible to counter. And then there's the sheer scale of production. Volunteer groups like Wild Hornets and Steel Hornets have reportedly produced thousands of 3D printed drone bomb casings, allowing Ukraine to mass produce drone dropped munitions. These small, inexpensive kamikaze drones, often made from PLA or carbon fiber reinforced filaments, are proving to be one of the deadliest tools on the battlefield. Some drones are even designed with detachable payloads, allowing them to drop explosives before returning for reuse. Drones aren't the only thing being 3D printed in Ukraine. The country has also turned to 3D printing for weapons and munitions, particularly when traditional supplies have run low or become too expensive to produce at scale. One of the most significant innovations is the 3D printed munition casings, specifically designed for drone dropped bombs. Conventional aerial munitions are costly, heavy, and slow to manufacture, especially under the pressures of war. But with 3D printing, Ukrainian engineers have found a way to create lightweight, aerodynamic casings that can be filled with explosives and mounted onto drones. The result? a low-cost, high-impact solution that allows Ukrainian forces to strike Russian vehicles, artillery positions, and supply convoys with deadly precision. Take the R-18 strike drone, for example. It doesn't merely carry explosives, it delivers 3D-printed explosive casings engineered to detonate on impact. Unlike traditional bombs that require complex assembly and expensive materials, these 3D printed versions can be mass produced in record time. And because they're printed on demand, they can be customized for specific missions. But Ukraine isn't stopping at drone munitions. Another major development is the RKG-1600, a 3D printed version of the Soviet-era RKG-3 anti-tank grenade. Originally designed to be thrown by hand, these grenades have been modified with 3D printed stabilizing fins, allowing them to be dropped from drones with pinpoint accuracy. This simple but highly effective upgrade has turned a nearly obsolete weapon into a major threat to Russian tanks, armored vehicles, and fortifications. But 3D printing still has major limitations in weaponry. While grenade casings, stabilizers, and some firearm parts can be printed, explosives, guidance systems, and electronics still require traditional manufacturing. Plastic and polymer parts also lack the durability of metal, making them prone to failure under extreme conditions. Even so, Ukraine is testing 3D printed firearms, suppressors, and periscopes for trench warfare. Soldiers are even customizing old Soviet rifles with printed grips and stocks. These innovations won't replace traditional weapons, but provide a crucial lifeline, proving 3D printing's impact on modern warfare. One of the most fascinating aspects of Ukraine's 3D printing revolution is that much of it is powered by volunteers, ordinary citizens, engineers, and hobbyists who have stepped up to support the war effort in ways that conventional manufacturing simply cannot match. Groups like Wild Hornets, Steel Hornets, and Aero Razvitka are leading this charge. These networks have mobilized makers across Ukraine and beyond to print and ship thousands of critical supplies directly to the front lines. And here's the key, they operate outside of government-controlled logistics. That means they can respond to battlefield needs in real time, sidestepping delays and disruptions that would cripple traditional supply routes. Think about it, conventional manufacturing requires massive facilities, months of planning, and long production cycles. But these volunteers? They can print replacement parts, drone components, and weapon accessories in just hours. And none of it would be possible without crowdfunding. Millions of dollars in donations have poured in to buy 3D printers, filaments, and specialized materials. Some supporters have even shipped entire printers to Ukraine giving soldiers the ability to manufacture their own equipment on the battlefield. It's a decentralized system built for resilience. Even if supply chains are attacked, production doesn't stop. 
Beyond weapons and drones, volunteers are printing tactical gear like trench periscopes, medical splints, and protective cases for electronics. Their ability to customize designs on demand makes these networks invaluable to Ukraine's defense. However, challenges remain. Volunteer-driven production can be inconsistent, and sourcing durable materials is an ongoing struggle. Yet, despite these hurdles, grassroots 3D printing networks remain vital to Ukraine's ability to innovate, adapt, and resist a better-equipped adversary. So, is 3D printing the future of warfare, or just a passing trend? The reality lies somewhere in between. While it won't replace traditional manufacturing, it has given Ukraine a critical edge in a war where speed and adaptability are everything. One major advantage is speed. Conventional weapons production can take months, but 3D printed designs can be created, tested, and deployed in days, allowing engineers to refine drones, munitions, and battlefield tools in real time. Then there's cost. Precision-guided munitions and reconnaissance drones are expensive, but 3D printing produces functional alternatives at a fraction of the price, making mass production feasible even with limited resources. Perhaps the biggest game-changer is decentralization. Unlike traditional factories vulnerable to airstrikes, Ukraine's small, scattered print hubs keep production running. Engineers can modify designs almost instantly, countering Russian electronic warfare with rapid adaptions. Still, 3D printing has limits. Plastics and composites lack the durability of steel, restricting use in high-impact applications. It's also best for small components. Tanks, jets, and complex missiles remain beyond reach. Ukraine also relies on imported filaments, resins, and electronics, making it vulnerable to supply disruptions. Yet, despite these challenges, 3D printing has reshaped its military strategy, proving that rapid, low-cost innovation can challenge a stronger adversary. What do you think? Is 3D printing the future of warfare or just a temporary fix? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss our latest uploads.